Hi friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This Is Faith. I had a chance to sit down with Stacy Scott, a basketball player, and he shared with me how God spared his life twice and how God brought a beautiful woman into his life. You won't want to miss who he married. In the midst of chaos and life's wreckage, the Lord is with you. Basketball player, life coach, founder of Never Alone Ministry, and husband of Nicole C. Mullen, Stacy Scott, had a great life growing up with friends and growing up with his God-given natural talents in sports. But with his talents came a sense of entitlement and lack of trust with people that led him down a road of poor decisions. Then a roommate invited him to a Bible study that changed him forever. Years later, there was a car accident that almost took his life. This is his story. This is today's Nashville, this is faith. Stacy, welcome to today's Nashville. I am so excited to sit down with you. I've been following you for quite a while on social media, and I thought I have to have him on my show. Your testimony is powerful, your ministries are powerful. So tell me where it all started. Well, first of all, I want to thank you. I woke up this morning to a beautiful day. And now I've come to a beautiful woman. Can't <laughs> well, lose, thank right? Thank you, thank you. But I just want to thank you. I know it took a minute for us to get this on the schedule, and, yeah. and I'm so happy to be here. But ministry is, is within all of us, really, right? But we just have to be able to embrace it. I'm really wanting to embrace it. And there were times in my life in the beginning, and I'm saying beginning before I was even saved, before I even knew the Lord, before I would even think to know the Lord, right? That, that the Lord was working in my life and I didn't know it. But we overlook those things because we're living in sin, right? Mm -hmm. And it took moments in my life that I looked back after I came to know the Lord and I thought, God was speaking to me back then, but I just didn't know it. Through my heathenness actions, I, I, I didn't know it. And he continually took me down this path. You know, I can recall when I was younger in college in my I wanted to date this girl, and I was a big man on campus, and she wouldn't date me. And I'm like, why won't you date me? I'm, 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 I'm Stacy, why won't you date me? She says, because you, you don't know the Lord. And that pierced me, pierced me. I had everything, but I didn't have that one thing that I needed to get, that one thing that I wanted, and that stuck with me for years until after I got out of college and, came and went into regular life and uh, ran across uh, uh, a friend of mine in LA and he had this Bible study he was going to. And he'll always tell me, you need to come to this Bible study. And I said, ah, I, just, I just didn't want to go, Lord, I was living in the way I wanted to live. Well, you were, you know, in basketball and absolutely scholarships and awards, absolutely. and I mean, you were the athlete. I was very much the athlete, but I was very much living a wrong life. When I finished uh, in uh, San Diego, and I was cut, I was on my way up to L.A. and I called my dad and from NBA or yes, yeah, so I was really unhappy. I was like, you know, Dad. I don't want to do this anymore. This is early 80s. I said, this is, this is not fun for me to go to a team and, and not be able to make it. And it's, 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 it's a, there's more to my life than that. And I said, I want to work with kids. And that's what I decided to do. 
So I was working with kids at the time that this guy, he's a gentleman now, he's a, he's a good friend. He asked me to live with him and he kept wanting me to go to this Bible study. And I'm like, you know, I, I just not ready yet. One day I came home and I was not happy. And I walked in and he says, hey, I'm going to the Bible study tonight. You want to go? Now to shut him up, because I was just so sick of it, I said, okay, Gip. His name was Gifford. I just called How him. How old Gip. were you at this time? 25. 25. I said, sure, I, I, I'll go. But I just wanted to shut you up. Did you tell him that? No. But I'm just saying, to him, I just want, this is the time I can do it. And he never asked me again. So you ever heard of Evangelical Free Church in Fullerton, California? Charles, uh, sure, Chuck Swindoll. Oh, Chuck. Yeah, my Chuck husband uh, published them. And, yeah. yeah. So Chuck, I went to his church and went to the Bible study. And the, and, uh, the men were in the study and I'm like a fish out of water and looking at everybody and they're all perfect. And so I had, they would say things in the Bible study and I'm thinking, okay, they're talking to me. I know you're trying to get me. And I just kept listening. And at the end, they started to pray. Everybody got together and they're praying. And in the prayer, I'm a Christian now. I understand. I love the Lord. We talk about salvation and Lord, is there anybody here, Lord, that needs you and loves you? And, and I'm just listening. And when he got done, I'm like, so can anybody do this, guys? They're like looking at me. Yeah, you, you can. I'm like, really? I said, okay, I, I want to do this. And they all gathered around me like we do as believers and just prayed me into the kingdom. And after they got done, I'm like, okay, so what do I do? What, what do I do? I don't know what to do. She said, well, I'll tell you what. The next thing is you need to find a church. You can come to EV Free. And then we need to, you need to get baptized. I'm like, baptized? I said, I've been baptized. She says, no, not that baptized. You need to get baptized. I grew up Catholic, right? I said, well, can I do it right now? And he says, he looks at me. Looked at the other pastors. Says, yeah. What time was it? This was 10.30 p.m. Fired up the, uh, the, the uh, uh, baptismal. Took me upstairs. Baptized me. I'm so happy. Now, my parents have been saved since I was high school. Okay? But I didn't want to know the Lord. Didn't want to have anything to do with it. Now, they're in Kansas City. And I'm in L.A. That's two hours difference. I call up my parents. I'm like... <sighs> Well, they didn't answer the phone the first time. I call them back again. Hello? Mom. Mama. Mama just got saved. She's like, what? What? Mom. Mama just got saved. She's like, Donald. Donald, praise the Lord. And they just, listen, we're in tears. We're crying. And now I'll turn around. I hang up the phone. I look at these guys. And I'm like, I'm never going to be like you guys. You guys are perfect. But the sin in me saw the perfection in them. And now looking back at my life now and being who I am, I, people say that to me. Like, I'm like, I'm not perfect at all. He does it within me is perfect, but I am not perfect. But they see this place that they're not. And they see a place like believer is, like I did for them. And now I can look back and say and give somebody a little, a little consultation on that. OK, because we're, we're, we're all growing. We're going to grow for the rest of our lives. OK, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do stupid stuff. But he that is within us is greater than he that is in this world. Amen. I mean, period. And he will forgive us and he will give us grace and he will give us love and he will give us all those things that are promised in his word. And that's our that's my assignment to make sure that these men, when they come to the Lord, that they know the goodness of him and who he is. Right. And, 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 and they can pour into that and trust in that. There's a lot of things we we don't do as Christians because we just don't have that trust that we really need to, to move forward. Because he says in Romans, that he's going to work all those things out. Right. So wow, wow. But we have to believe it, like really believe it. Right. And he's always with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. No, right? he won't. there's no there's no struggle that that we no temptation that we can go through that he has, hasn't already conquered. And he'll also make a way out. I mean, all these little things. If you can say, is that true? If that's true, then I have to live my life a little different. Am I right? That's right. All right. So. And you know what? The Lord has given you an incredible ministry yeah. from that time forward. And we're going to talk about it when we come back. Absolutely. Cannot wait.
Stacy, let's talk about what God has been doing in your life mm. since you were saved. I've been doing a lot in my life since I've been saved. And it's so funny that um, when I look back at my life, I'm looking at seasons that happens in your life, and one thing leads to another and leads to another. And it's like you really don't really know who you are. You don't really know God's plan until you get over here, right? So I've started Never Alone Ministries uh, several years ago. But it was birthed um, through hardship. You know, a, a, a lot of good things come through hardship if we can just allow God to let that process take, right? In the midst of narcissistic abuse, trying times, hard times, you know, times of sorrow, in my car, in a park, thinking, Lord, where are you? Where are you? It took me to a place that God says, there's parts in your life that I'm trying to work on. There are things in your life there's holes in your life that aren't filled with me. It's filled with you. And you're asking me to help you because you're in a place that you put yourself. I did not put you there. Once the Lord spoke to me like that, it started changing everything. Like you thought you were a Christian, but you actually are a Christian, but you're not deep in your faith. And now you go like, well, how I'm not really deep in my faith. So that started me on this quest of seeking the Lord and saying, Lord, okay, now I'm going to die to myself, or uh, literally, you own my life. I don't own my life anymore. You own my life. So do what you want with it, and I mean it. And you know, I was in a marriage at that time with a narcissist. And let's, before we talk about that marriage, though, yeah. let's talk about what, you know, a lot of people you hear, yeah. Oh, they're a narcissist, or it's almost a common word now. Oh, yeah, but it's and actually, you have a ministry now yeah. dealing with that. Yeah, so I'll touch on the the narcissism thing. Uh, everybody is not a narcissist that thinks that they're a narcissist. There's narcissistic tendencies in us all, in one fashion or another. But for somebody to specifically say you're a narcissist, that is a dangerous word. A narcissist, not very many people meet a true narcissist. And you did. Oh, they're evil, evil people. Now, I'm not judging them. It's the state of mind they're in from their pains and their hurts. And, and they use, they use the, after going through pains and hurts, they have to cover it up and they have to push people away and, and do all, and dodge and hide. And they, then they become somebody that they're not because they're dodging and hiding. And if you got molested as a young kid and the, your perpetrator saying, don't, if you do this, I'm going to kill somebody. If you do that and you, you don't do it, you hold it in and, you, and you're still going through this, this abuse and you can't say anything about it. It's, it's like, now I don't trust anybody. And with that trust comes now, I got to control people. And that's narcissist. And then everything starts to go haywire from there. So in that, I started NAM Ministries or Never Alone Ministries. And I had to reach out for help to places in, around, whether it's on the internet or whatever. And everywhere I would go, they would be just spewing out anger and bitterness. And so were sadness. you still in this relationship? Uh, yeah, I was actually in the relationship at that time. Okay? And I just couldn't get relief. I couldn't get healing. So I said, I'm going to get a hold of New Life. You know, New Life Ministry, Steve and Becky and those guys and Chris. Well, I contacted them. And they started to talk to me about my wife and, and what she was or what she was doing with the tendencies. And they said, okay, uh, you should do this. And then I would do this. And I would say, okay, well, I did. And they tell me, okay, th th this is what's going on. She's a narcissist, and these are things that you need to do. You need to set guidelines. You need to set boundaries. You need to put guardrails up. And as I would do that, they were spiritual guardrails. I'm not going to give up my spirituality. Because once I found out everything and I gave up myself to the Lord totally, I said, I'm going to put these guardrails up. And in those guardrails, it led her away from me because I had the guardrails. I'm not going to let you do this and we're not going to do this and we're not going to do this bad thing and I'm going to allow foul language to be running all around my house and we're not going to do those things that are outside of the will of God. And it led her away. And in that moment, I said, okay, Lord, now it's time for you to take me to a new level now. I didn't date for two and a half years. Like literally, I didn't date. As a matter of fact, there was a time in my life at that time, this might 
sound kind of different, but I, I had no urge for sex at all. My life was solely in him. That's where Nam started. I went to my pastor and I said, you know, I've been in these sites or these, uh, what do you call them, little rooms, and these people are contacting me, right? Because in those rooms, I would say, hey, there's a way out. And people would hear, so they would DM me. And I went to my pastor and said, I, you know, I don't know what to do. Now I had a full-fledged business going on. And he says, God is talking to you. You need to go home and pray about it. I said, okay, I'll go home and pray about it. I went next week, I came back. I'm like, Pastor Steve, listen. Um, I prayed about it. I don't know these people are still. He says, you need to pray about it. I'm like, I'm praying about it. It's just, it's just, I, I, I came back the next week. Before that, I said, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, please just make a way. As soon as I came back to him, now I'm with, with Pastor Rick, and he's going like, hey, you need to do something about it. You need to start this. You need to start this. And I'm like, oh, how am I going to do this? I don't have time to do this. And guess what? The God just opened up the floodgates, like literally it created this platform for me to, to have people that are hurting. It not only turned into narcissistic abuse, it turned into more abuse. It could be any type of physical abuse, emotional abuse. People were just coming in that I had to literally redesign the whole platform of NAM. So now NAM is NAM. And then there's uh, a men's ministry and there's a women's ministry. There's a prayer room, pretty big prayer room. There's, uh, uh, you know, relationship and marriage. There's uh, encouragement. There's uh, uh, how I came to Christ. There's all these different things. So they come into Nam, and through Nam they go to these different places wherever they need help. And some people say, well, I came into the prayer room. But then through the prayer room, they learned about the main Nam and they learned everything else. So God is like, I'm like, and there was like 3,500 people around the world that are inside Nam, you know, talking and, and encouraging each other. And, you know, I do some encouraging too, you know, but, you know, sometimes my encouraging, you know, is kind of direct, right? Jesus was direct, right? And it's kind of direct because I want you to grow. I'm going to become what God wants you to become. I want you to die to yourself and know that you can't do this on your own. You can't do it on your own. I'm, I'm sorry. You just can't do it on your own. But there is a way. There is a way. And Jesus, Jesus is the way. Never alone ministries. I love what God did in your life. He restored yeah. everything. Yes. He gave you a beautiful wife. We're going to talk about her when we come back and where God is leading you next. Oh, please, let's do that. Stacy, God has blessed you with an incredible ministry. Absolutely. And a beautiful wife, and she is pretty well known. You know the funny thing? Let's, who is she? Her name is Nicole C. Mullen Scott. Beautiful, I absolutely love her music, have followed her for years. Mm -hmm. And I actually didn't really know you two were married when I started following you. Yeah. I thought, wait, I've seen him. We were at an Israel event. Yeah. And you were with her. Yeah. And uh, Well, the so, funny thing is, I didn't even know her. Did you know her? Oh, I didn't know who she was when, we, when I first met her. I go to my phone, I check to see what's going on. And if you know Facebook, there's a little red there's little red buttons that pop up to let you know, I hate those buttons. Well, in the video button, it was like 20 plus or something like that. And I'm like, I woke up four o'clock in the morning to use the bathroom. Got back in bed, could not go back to sleep. I'm like, forget it. I'm just going to start I'm gonna do my stuff. And got the phone. Little red button, hate the little red button. I'm, I'm right, I'm, I'm doing a little segment on little red button. Little red button, tap the little red button. What happens? This girl shows up and she's pouring her heart out about abuse, how she was abused and this and that. And I listened to it for like two minutes. Immediately I'm like, oh gosh, she needs, she needs, she needs Nam. So I didn't look at anything, but I just saw Nicole C. Mullen. And I contacted, I, I sent an email to my women's director and I said, uh, Nee, you got to get a hold of this girl. She needs help. She calls me first thing in the morning and she says, Stacy, 
do you know who that is? I'm like, yes, Nicole. This is a true story. She says, no, 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 it's, it's Nicole C. I'm like, okay, me, nee, it's Nicole C. Can you please give her a call, please, and help her, right? I don't, I'm, it's a women's thing. I'm just letting her do that. She says, no, 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 she's a singer. It's me. I said, listen, me, nee, I just need you to get in contact with her. Listen, I know a lot of famous people, okay? That's not impressive to me. I don't know her, so I'm thinking she ain't that famous. I don't know her, right? Well, how stupid am I, right? She says, no, no, I said to her, call her. Next thing I know, I get a DM from Nick, Nicole, calling Nick. And she's like, uh, are you a counselor? And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm just a servant of the Lord. Nothing after that. Next thing I know, I contact me. Nee, and you get in touch with her? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I never knew who she was. And I didn't know that the abuse and the struggles that she went through happened years before. I didn't know. So all of a sudden, she's texting me back, Nick. DM. And we started going back and forth a little bit. And I'm not going to get into any more okay. because you'll probably be the one to get this I out in the so. open anyway. Okay. But that's how I met her. It was by accident. Listen, if I had grabbed my phone 10 seconds earlier or 10 seconds later, wow, well, literally, I wouldn't be sitting here, like literally right now. And I will tell you something. When I started my journey of filling these holes what up. What year was this? This I mean, was... Uh, 2000, 2019, 2020. Okay, so it's been recent. Yes, yeah, it's been recent. If I, haven't, if, if, if I hadn't filled up those holes with Jesus that I had filled up with me, never, 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 first of all, what I've had now. Second of all, I wouldn't have been in a place to be with somebody like her. She loves the Lord. I mean, she can, she can, recite scripture, the whole book, without even looking at it. So he actually literally prepared me. I wrote out when I started that journey what I was looking for in a woman. I said, Lord, if you have this woman for me, I wrote out on a piece of paper. When I met my wife and got serious, I looked at that piece of paper. I tore it up. I'm like, Lord, this was junk that I just did. Look at this. I go to Nick. Nick, I can't believe this. God is so good. I, just, I don't deserve this. And she's like, stop saying that. You deserve it. But never, I didn't know on the other side that God was working in her life the same way he was working in my life. Right? And brought us together like this. And I'll end it by saying this. I have a college friend, 40-year relationship in college. I met her when I was a sophomore. She sends me an email when we got engaged. Nobody knew we were dating. We didn't make it public at all. We just, it was just us, right? And said, Stacy, you know, I just wanted to write you, I still got the email, to let you know that, listen, there's, there's a woman that I think would be, you guys would just be so good together, you know? Her name, and she's a singer, her name is Nicole C. Mullen. Nick was with me at that moment that I was reading that. And I said, Nick, and she's, re I'm like, and she you were knew. engaged. Yes, and she didn't know I was dating this, this woman. And it was like, the Lord is like, I'm like, okay, we're good. Can we get married like in two seconds? Okay, because this is this, this has got to be. And so we, uh, we got married in uh, 2020 and uh, in a beautiful wedding, beautiful house, and uh, she's just a jewel. You know, something happened, though, in your life not too long ago mm -hmm. that almost took your life. I was in a motorcycle accident. I lived in Bermuda. I was in a motorcycle accident, a head-on collision, and I survived it. Now, four days prior to that accident, I was on the beach talking to the Lord, thanking the Lord, Lord, you, everything is great with me. Lord, thank you for, thank you. I mean, I was 50 years old. I'm like, this is great. Thank you. And four days later, I'm laying in the hospital. And I didn't know what was going on. I was like, this is like, Lord, what do you... What do you want from me? He wanted more of me. He wanted more of me. So when I went through the narcissistic thing, it took me back to that moment. And in that moment, it took me to another stage of my relationship to Christ, to the point. Now I'm married to Nicole. She's off on a, a trip or something, uh, singing. I happened to uh, take her car. I was going to drive my convertible. It was a beautiful day. I decided to take her SUV. I took her SUV. 
half mile from my house, there was a coyote that ran out in front of me. And I had the cruise control on, so her car is different than mine. I couldn't get my foot and just, I careened into these trees, careened in, right near a, a creek, lost control. It was, the car looked like a bomb went off, right? So as I woke up, I hear people talking. And all of a sudden, I'm looking around like, what just happened? What just happened? Guys are coming down. The police people were there trying to get me out of the car. I fell out of the car, and I stood up. And he says, no, 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 just we." I'm like, no, no, I'm OK. I walked up to the top, because it was we went down, walked up to the top. There was like 10 people there, and they're like looking at me like. And I just busted down in tears. I'm like, Lord, what? Like. This is the second time. Like, haven't I give you enough? And that's when the Lord says, no, I'm not done with you. Six days before, my mother calls me. I'm praying for Nicole. She says, if anything ever happened to you, I don't know what would happen to Nicole. Six days. And then this accident happens. My wife finds out about the accident, flies home. And she says, Stacy, I didn't sleep last night. I was up all night. Demons were coming at me. It was about you, and, they, and I called my whole staff, all everybody, the whole crew, into my room, and we got on and got on our knees and prayed the night before. And she had no idea what was going. No on. No idea. God is good. I will follow Him. That's a song. So if I had a word that I do in my life is to get as close as you can. Don't worry about anything else. Just say, God says, you say, what can, what can God do for you? No, no, no. It's what you can do for him. That's what he wants out of our lives. Stacy. What a pleasure. We have so much more to talk about. Yeah, Will need, you come back? Yes, but we need Kleenex like immediately. <laughs> Thank you so much. God, God bless you. Thank you, okay. you too. Thanks for having me. My friend, are you suffering from abuse? Like Stacy said, you are never alone. He's standing right in front of you. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Thank you.